Welcome friends near and far. Justin Bell here at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Today it is my real pleasure to take you on a journey to the next destination of Corvette. In a moment we will play our 25 minute feature film Putting the World on Notice. It's an entertaining new way to reveal the all new 2023 Corvette Z06. And think about it, it is an American made global supercar that is tantalizingly attainable. Stay tuned immediately following the film for a discussion with some of the faces you're about to see. But enough from me, without further ado, I bring you the moment you've been waiting for. So please sit back and enjoy. The Z06 was a code for a track-oriented performance option on the 1963 Corvette. The only way you would even know to order it was through people whispering in people's ears, if you want to go racing, right in the box, you want Z06 option and you'll get all the specialty hardware. It wasn't until the fifth generation that we brought it back and it's become a brand unto itself. You want it to go faster, stop faster, turn faster. Basically, it's the most track-oriented Corvette that we do. Through the fifth, sixth, seventh, and now eighth generation car, we've moved the streetcar and the racer closer and closer together. The development both on the vehicle side and the engine side are tied together at the hip. It's a way to put the best of Corvette together and expand the performance bandwidth. The mid-engine architecture in the eighth generation Corvette allows us to do that even more. In my quest for performance, a Z06 was the car, which is basically a race car for the street and will perform with the best of the best worldwide. It's the first time that I had experienced a Corvette on the road that actually rode and felt like a race car. That precision, to me, that was everything. This is the one that elevates the Corvette brand. Saying that it felt like a supercar doesn't do it justice. <laughs> this thing rips. This keeps you locked in. I know we're having a conversation right now, but I'm still focused here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still focused here the other people that we're competing against that are in a price range that is unique to themselves are going to look back at this as the one that changes how they operate. The heart of the Z06 is the engine. We had mid-engine architecture, which was a big step forward, but we also needed that power. There was a niche following that really pined for the immediate response, the lightweight, visceral feel of a naturally aspirated engine that would exceed the horsepower of the prior generation supercharged Z06. What kind of powertrain would we need to do that? The 
The only way to achieve that is to do the highest horsepower naturally aspirated V8 that's ever done in automotive history. That's what had to happen. Oh, this is the mag ride, too. <laughs> I just start it. <laughs> Wait, can I start it? An engine of this nature is truly playing in the exotic space. We had our hands really untied to buy the best aluminum forged pistons, titanium connecting rods, to go to the true mechanical valve train. It is a low volume, hand built precision engine. The big advantages of moving to a flat plane crank is the mass in the engine that's moving the fastest is much lighter. And in doing that allows the engine to accelerate in speed much more rapidly than any small block before it and also achieve more than 650 horsepower, making it the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 engine in a production car. We only do a mid-engine car once. We really looked at um, how to how to get the engine that we really all wanted to have, which was um, a flat plane crank V8. That was what we really wanted to do. Step on it, step on it. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, it rubs so high! <laughs> this is crazy! Oh my God, it's still going! <laughs> Having a, a C8 steering myself, Z51 package, just to see the RPM go to eight and a half K, I think it's actually 8,600. Yep. This is nuts. Most of us are used to shifting a V8, you know, 65, 6,600 at the, at the highest. The LT6 will rev to 8,600 RPM. From 7,000 to almost 9,000, was a whole different range that not many people get to experience. And it makes power the whole way up. So even when you're up in those higher RPM ranges, you could tell when we stepped into the gas more, you could still feel it pulling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's just instant. And the thing keeps pulling and pulling and, and it's all the way to the, the red line, all the way to the red line. Each time you just feel the, the power building and building and building. Uh, to me, it's, it's what it's all about. that speed enables the engine to pump more air, process more fuel, and produce more power. But another part of it is generations of learning how to balance the requirements to make a car fast and comfortable on the track, and also comfortable as an everyday driver. The manufacturing tolerances in this engine are race car tight and that requires a skilled operator and custom shims to make the resulting engine essentially fit net, uh, no gaps anywhere. This engine runs to 8,600 RPM. That's by far the quickest spinning engine we've ever done. And the only way you do that is to have extremely precise manufacturing. Are you guys good, Harlan? 
car six ready. All right, here we go. You know, we're all used to Corvettes with Thunder from the Gods V8 sound. My dad has a 62 Corvette, and every time I hear that thing, it's wonderful. Over the course of 70 years now, you know what you're gonna get. And it's this visceral V8 small block experience. So for one, on this car, we don't wanna lose that. But for two, on this car, we've got a completely different engine. We wanted to keep the Corvette sound, but also let you know you're in the flat plane crank. Right. One of the first things we noticed with the C8 Z06, boy, the car sounds great outside, but I can't hear anything inside. It's there, but we can't really hear it in the cabin. And you gotta be able to hear some of that in the car. It's, it's, it's like, like wow. wow. Right. Yeah, it's a little like, <laughs> eh. There's still a lot of improvements to, to be had. This is a new chapter. We really needed to move the needle there. And it actually required us to completely rethink the exhaust system. And so we ended up actually tearing up a bunch of the back of the car, completely re-architecting the exhaust, decoupling the tips from the end of the pipe, and we shaped the tips like a reverse megaphone. So when the sound comes out, it actually reflects off parabolic surfaces, and that projects sound forward to the driver's ear. It was a, a huge challenge, but we wanted that combination of sounds great on the outside and sounds great on the inside, and we wanted it to be real. The big part of this ride is to confirm the sound quality and the sound uh, presence, everything we've been striving for. We have plenty of engineering tools, but for this type of thing, there's a chest cavity pumping thing and just hits you like a brick wall when it drives by. When you get in the car or you stand outside the car and you hear it and it gives you goosebumps, <laughs> that's when you know. <laughs> and this car, this car did that for us. Hang on. <laughs> right there, ma'am. Just gives me goosebumps every time. I think this is the perfect example of blending clinical perfection and also the rawness that the flat plane crank provided. The flat plane crank is a symphony. And hearing the mechanicals work, it's, it's music after so many years. I'm pretty pumped, actually. That was pretty awesome.
I have a background in footwear design before I came to GM. There, you're designing around an athlete. Everything that we have here is designed around the mother. We respect our past, but we are always moving forward. We really try to cause the design to look better in a way that the car works better. This new Z06 has basically started with a clean sheet of paper. I admire that because they just taken the most advanced design and updated it each time. It is so advanced and so edgy and beautiful. It's a careful balance of beautiful sculpture and performance metrics. We try to make them transparent to the design itself. This time, we're changing everything but the doors, the roof, and the hatch. It typically starts at the road. Wider wheels and tires, packaging larger diameter brakes, more traction, more stopping power, better cornering power. The front and rear fascias, fenders and quarters, all the aerodynamic stuff is different. A big part of the Z06 mission is in its chassis. The architecture was designed to put power to the ground like no Z06 before it. 20 inch diameter wheels in the front, and for the first time, 21 inch diameter wheels on the rear. We want to make sure we take full advantage of that weight on the back end, powering off the line to maximize the traction. The fact that we're widening the tires also enables us to create bodywork that feeds right into the engine need to breathe and be cool. We started putting the wider fenders and the wider quarters on it. Then it was like, okay, we got something here. Like prior generations of Z06, we have an available Z07 package. That's for the truly committed track person. You check the box for a Z07, you're getting ceramic brakes, carbon fiber ground effects, you get a carbon fiber wing. An optional carbon fiber wheel that reduces unsprung mass by over 40 pounds. Lighter wheels spin faster naturally. When you hit a bump, you want the suspension to react instantly the lighter the tire and wheel assembly is, the quicker it can do it. And with the optional Z07 package, we've seen a zero to 60 time of 2.6 seconds. We wanted to talk about how we can make this very performance-driven exterior, and how do we take the interior up to another level? When you get into a manufacturing process, to some extent, that becomes very stiff, and there's not a lot of uh, emotion and art and feel to it. How do you bring that human touch? Carbon fiber, it's beautiful because you have this man-made material that's incredibly strong, lightweight, giving you that performance feeling. Then we bring the art into it by the forms that it has, and then hitting it with leather piece floating on top of it. Each one of them were like building a, a small sculpture, and it just blends those two worlds of art and science and craft and quality. You get that understanding that you bought more than just something that's exhilarating and fun, but you also have a full crafted piece that surrounds you. If you take exterior color, interior color, seat belts, calipers, wheels, you could build well over 11,000 different combinations. You can truly build whatever you want and make it bespoke to you. Having something that brings the thrill of driving to everybody in their own unique way has kind of really been the focus in Corvette. Oh my goodness. This is something right here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 1975, all-white Corvette. My, my grandfather used to work on it every day. Every time I go to his house, he'd be in the back. And that was my introduction to cars for real. My dad's a collector now, and now I had the means to be able to collect. So it's part of my family. It's a learning process for me every day. I'm with them. Any conversation, I'm learning something new every time. Yeah. The 
way we kind of always looked at it is it has to look like it's moving fast when it's sitting still. It's yeah. like traveling down the court, right? 100%. Like it's, it's keeping you in that sight line and moving forward. Keeps you locked in. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. That's our... It's your court vision, right? 100%. Right. Yeah. Every detail matters. Our whole goal is to still be able to capture that thrill of the drive. It should be an experience, man. I, getting out of a car, yeah. <laughs> like you get out there and take a deep breath, your heart's still pumping a little bit. Like, you can't get it too many places in my life. Is that feeling a similar feeling when you're on the court? Yeah, I chase that feeling. My first few years, you're reading the list. Oh, this person's better than that person. I know they say the same thing about cars, and I finally got to a point where I'm just competing against myself. You know, I've seen my career and my performance take tremendous strides just by that headspace alone. But at the end of the day, it's how do you build upon yourself to make yourself better? We're nearing 70 years with this vehicle. You have that, that feeling of who you are and what your brand is. It also gives you that opportunity to challenge who that is, to make it your own. But as you're doing that, you get to look backwards a little bit to make sure you're making the right decisions with where it goes. I mean, coming from a history of Booker blood that, that played a lot of basketball, starting with my grandfather, moving down a generation to my father. You know, now me, you know, I just want to take it to a whole nother level, man. You know, it kept me going. i definitely take this to a track and to a really nice dinner. And if I want to make some, some real noise, pulling up, this is what I'm going to be in right here. Coming to the Nürburgring is the ultimate test. You get every single sort of turn, every high speed, low speed, high grip, low grip. It's a long, flowing racetrack, but with many, many challenges. And you really are pushing any road car to the absolute limit. Every sort of load that you could possibly experience anywhere else in the world, you get it all here on one racetrack. It really is the benchmark for the world. So much of the performance of the car started on the racetrack. That's where things are tried, because they're stretching the limits, and they bring that technology to the road. When you're thinking about a, a supercar, you're thinking about speed, you're thinking about horsepower. And without that, you're nowhere. Good luck. Thank you, Ollie. Appreciate that. car goes so fast so easily and the ability to just kind of handle the car on this track is pretty unheard of. It's fundamentally a race car that you can drive on the road. That ability to carve the corners, the ability to put that traction down, is all of those feelings that I had from the race car, it's right here in the Z06. General Motors recognized this as an incredible place to come and develop vehicles and to compete with the Europeans, the BMWs, the Mercedes, the Porsches. And if we really want Corvette to compete on the world stage and race on a world stage, then we really have to begin selling cars with right-hand drive. We have to do it for Corvette for the future, period. 
It's unequivocally a supercar. The Z06 will reward customers that choose to explore its performance limits. And there's nothing more important than that connection with the machine when you're driving something with the performance capability of a Z06. European competitors have got to be a little nervous. You guys really hit the nail on the head with this. I've always been very proud of the fact that the Corvette is a purely American effort, but I could never have guessed where we would be today. The new Z06 brings that track experience to the everyday enthusiast. If I look at 10-year-old me and say, all right, we're gonna build this exotic engine. We're gonna have the best tires in the world, biggest brakes that we've ever put on a Corvette. Aerodynamics that are better than anything we've done before. And you can be part of that. That is fulfilling every dream I would have as a young kid. I represent one of hundreds that have put their blood and sweat into this engine. It truly does open the doors of what we can do with a small block V8. We're only just getting started. The project is like going to the moon. It's a product of a vision, but our team has never done. Z06 is just the next chapter in a very long book. Well, yeah, I'm speechless, absolutely speechless. It is power like we've never seen. It is obviously fast, beautiful, and just a car, well, for me, certainly made me remember why it was I wanted to ever grab a steering wheel and drive fast. I don't know really what else to say, but luckily for you, I'm joined by a panel who are not so speechless, and we're gonna have a great conversation about the film, and of course, the star, the Corvette Z06. So let me introduce you to our esteemed guests. We have Corvette Executive Chief Engineer, Taj Jukta. We have Assistant Chief Engineer of Small Block Engines, Dustin Gardner. Joining us is Amelia Hartford, who is a record-breaking performance builder and driver. And Film Director from Porch House, Andrew Schneider, who was very responsible for the film we just watched. And my friend, retired Corvette racer, five-time Le Mans winner, five-time Sebring, and five-time Petit Le Mans winner, as well as a multiple champion, Oliver Gavin. Well, firstly, everyone, well done. That was just a wonderful film to watch and great to see your participation. Let's get started. So, uh, Taj, Corvette to you is such a way of life. Um, how does it feel now after all this time? Because I know it is a real progression to get the car to market. What's it like to finally lift the curtain and show everybody? Well, it's so exciting for us because we've been working on this actually for about six years. And when we introduced the Stingray, we were super excited about that. But in the back of our mind, we knew what was coming. The Z06 is coming. And so we couldn't say anything uh, throughout the whole development. So for us, we have to be silent, silent, silent. And all of a sudden, it's a burst of energy. Being able to share everything at once is just so exhilarating for us, almost as exhilarating as the car itself. So I get that from like the engineering and, and the corporate side, you know, that e evolution, but you've actually driven it. And you and I watching, we never have. And Andrew, that was your job. And there were so many moments in the film that I was like, how did they do that? But my favorite is sort of that convergence of the camera flying in it. Was it a drone, a helicopter, meeting the Z06 on the road? It was, it made me feel that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be looking at this and then I want to be in the car. Yeah, thank you. No, we, we actually uh, used uh, FPV drone. So we actually flew it over the water and into the road and kind of lined up with the rear of the car. And it took quite a few tries to get the timing correct, which was tough because it was raining that day. And we were just very thankful to, to have that drone in the sky, fly it. And then as soon as it landed, it started pouring rain. So it was meant to be. It was, it was Hollywood. meant to be. It That's was perfect. Meant to be. Now, Dustin, as someone involved, so involved with the engines, I know that even as a, as a driver, we all get asked, hey, what's the horsepower? What's the horsepower? What is the horsepower? I mean, the horsepower and how did you achieve it? What is the horsepower? It's about the power, right? Yeah. At the end yeah, of the day, exactly. that's what's fueling this beast. Yeah. So it was just last Thursday that we finished doing our um, testing per the SAE procedure to get everything lined up, correlated with the vehicle data, 
all that additional cow work at the end to make sure we left nothing on the table is where we got the engine up to a rated 670 horsepower. And, right, and to put that in perspective, right, the, the current highest output naturally aspirated V8 is 620-something, right? So we're, we're taking that crown by a hefty margin. <laughs> and when you think about it, that is almost exactly double the first ever Z06. Show how incredible time and technology is. Well, Amelia, I know you love horsepower, and I know you, you've held some of the records for the highest horsepower Corvette ever built. Um, but what was it like for you when you actually got to ride in it? You, we saw in the video, you just that sort of the horsepower kicking you back in the seat. I mean, you were genuinely excited. It was very surprising for a production model vehicle. I have familiar myself with the aftermarket space. My Corvette is about 1,200 horsepower to the tire. And it's hard to get excited with stock vehicles but when i was in the passenger seat of the z06 it was such an experience that it's hard to put into words and for you you kept on waiting i'm sure at around six thousand six and a half to shift yeah right and so you're like oh something's going wrong i was expecting it to shift at 65 but then it wasn't and there wasn't a drop off of horsepower either i'm just like you can see me getting thrown in the seat in a high rpm like it just had so much torque and it just kept going fantastic well, the enthusiasm definitely came across, but it's the same really for you, Ollie. What was it with you that resonated about the new Z06? So when I got in the car for the very first time at the Nürburgring facility that the GM have, and we, I got in, put it in track mode, just drove it down the street, it just had all of those feelings of the, of the race car. So, you know, to me, it, it is that amazing machine that not only can just be a daily driver and you can drive it to the racetrack, but then when you switch that engine mode, the car just comes alive and all of a sudden you're in a race car. It's amazing. So that distinction between road and track is really less than ever before. The gap between the road car and the race car is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now here we, we have the eighth generation mid-engine Z06 and it's just got that, all of that race car feel to me. All, the, all the, the, the lights are on and it's just fantastic to be experiencing that. I imagine that this is part of the excitement for you too, though, when you, you hear like Amelia and Ollie, even with all his experience and all her horsepower, talk about the cars. I mean, Dustin, that engine creating it, and as you say, just getting the, the final horsepower numbers, but it still must be very gratifying to know that someone like Amelia and Ollie just go, oh, wow, this is, this is the real deal. No, it's extremely rewarded, just for myself and the extended team of working on it, right? Uh, the LT6, it's hard to put into words the emotion you're trying to communicate or give somebody and Miller, your reaction sums it up, right? It's not something you can verbalize. It's, yeah. it's an emotional experience. It both gets you, as you said, mentally when you see the tack zing past 6600 and the LT6 wants to do that with great authority, right? It, it, it flies past six, 7,000 up to the red line. And then, so there's the, the mental side of it of just getting used to the engine going that high. Then there's the exhilaration of the sound you were saying earlier on about that initial shift when you got it in first gear and you stand on the gas, you've got to be really on it to get it into second gear so you don't get into the, the rev limiter there. But that's how quickly it, it accelerates and it just revs up so fast. It's just pulling all the way through to 8600. Yeah, I was just going to speak to that, that revving as high as it does is one thing, but how quickly it revs is another. Because it's not like it's a slow progression from 6600 to 8600. It goes fast. It revs quickly, but I mean, that's a, a testament to everything you guys have done with the flat plane crank. Yeah, the torque peak is right around where you'd normally shift, 6,300 RPM. <laughs> yeah. So that's where it really starts to pull hard. Yeah. I mean, you can just feel everybody's enthusiasm and even you guys have been living with it. You've been just experiencing it. But Andrew, how difficult is it to capture people's reactions? Because there really is only a one first time. Um, I mean, Amelia's reaction was one of my favorites of the film for sure, because um, we, we really kept her away and out of you know the car's line of sight. The car was covered. Um, we wanted to keep it as genuine as possible. Now, as you said, your enthusiasm for Corvette has been there for years. But what was it? What drew you to the cars? How I found my passion for cars actually started with an LS small block. And from there, I've done a lot of different builds. I've done a lot of different motors in said builds. And I've also swapped a lot of LSs in those builds. Um, and I think at the time when the C8 was first announced, the Stingray, I was looking for what my next project was going to be. And I wanted something that was going to challenge me. And just seeing what everything was going for in the market and what you get in return, I didn't feel that there was a lot of options. 
And I decided that I was going to take the step into more of the supercar world. And ironically, after I made that decision, a week later, you guys had announced the C8 Stingray. And I thought this is, it's unbeatable for everything else in the market. Not only the, the price, but the power, the, the capabilities the car has. It, I just saw it as the perfect challenge. You were Tad is looking, saying, please don't touch my car. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually what's happening right now. Please don't put turbos on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking an attack onto her comment. She's one of the first people who realized that the basic chassis and platform, the C8, can handle a lot more power. Oh, yeah. Well, Oli, a, a follow-up question, because arguably the toughest crowd to please will be in Europe with yep. the Z06. So how do you think it's going to be received there? So the, the reception of the Stingray has been fantastic. And I think that the Z06 is only going to build on that. that is, it's been remarkable when you see how the UK has accepted the car, but also throughout Europe, you know, the buzz is there. The orders are pouring in. In fact, we can't almost keep up with that demand for the Stingray. But now with the Z06 coming on, that's just really going to build on that, that ground that we've laid. And you know, the performance numbers from the Z06, it, it, everybody's going to be absolutely so excited to see the car out on the road. I think it's going to be just so much fun to have. I mean, Taj, the driver experience, I mean, you have someone like him who's a bit of a ringer, right? So, you know, <laughs> bit, his driving yeah. experience is, is somewhat differently <laughs> distorted. But what, is, what was your goal for the driver experience when they got in the car? Because it isn't one size fits all, is it? No, in fact, um, even though the numbers are phenomenal, it's not really a numbers car. You know, we're all talking about the sensory perception of what it's like to be in the car, to drive the car, and um, making that performance accessible. It's not just a pinnacle, super fast lap, but how do you get there? How does it feel as you do it? And this is, I think this is also a thing where we've learned from the racing program, you know, over all of the years, all the generations, but now we're seeing it really transferred over into this Z06. And, and the performance of this car. I mean, you can definitely feel the excitement, Andrew, right? Whether it's from the people that built it, the people that drive it, the people that are gonna mess with it. Um, <laughs> you, you she can promises not to. She promises <laughs> not to. Hey, you can, not my uh, words. <laughs> no, you, can feel, you can feel this uh, buildup of anticipation and excitement. But something else that was wonderful, I thought was the mix, the sound mix, the way your audio guys did that combining the sound of the engine and the, the running of the car with, with the music. I'm glad you caught that. Something that was early on in the, uh, in the development stages for the film was that we were gonna take the uh, audio sound of the car and blend it with the music. So if you listen closely, maybe on the second watch, um, you'll actually notice that in times it, it, we kind of blend the audio notes that we captured with the, the soundtrack. Especially and then, on that edit with the wheel. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That, that too, yeah, for sure. And, and uh, it's just, it's all about spatial audio and throwing it to different places to really, yeah. you know, but the, the exhaust note was such a huge talking point for the car and the, and the story that, you know, it was important. Well, obviously capturing the audio is one thing, but you heard it first hand in the audio dyno booth. What was that like? It, funny enough, I wasn't supposed to be there that early for it. I showed up to set five hours early because I heard there was going to be some audio dyno testing done on the car and I had to be there to hear it. But just hearing and seeing the Z06 for the first time, not to get corny, but it was, it was emotional for me because two years ago I was just a customer buying a C8 Stingray for the first time and I don't think Chevrolet expected what I was going to do with the car and I can promise you I didn't expect it because I have video footage saying I was going to leave the car stock and not touch it. So <laughs> <laughs> just to see where, you know, in the past two years of just buying the car as a customer to being able to sit here with everyone on this panel on the Z06 film and being part of the launches. It's incredible, it's insane. But that little bit about the, the contours of the, in, in, you know, the exhaust tips, forcing back the sound, reverberating back. I mean, is that, that's the first for Corvette, I'm sure. What we knew was uh, this engine was capable of being, providing an oral experience unlike any other. And so it, it, it ended up re-architecting the whole exhaust system. In fact, the whole lower end of the rear fascia ended up having to be redesigned. We ended up put these reverse megaphones mounted to the fascia so the sound pulsations as they come out of the exhaust reflect off that parabolic surface and go forward. From the outside of the car, just if you don't look carefully, it just looks like a regular or old exhaust. But actually, there's a ton of science going on right there. Oli, we, we talked about being here in America. It is a global car. It's a car that's got to appeal around the world. Um, you get to drive all sorts of things, as do I. How, how, how do you think it'll be compared around the world? Well, I think that this is going to be a, a, an amazing moment for Corvette. 
You know, this is a global supercar coming out, being launched today. Anybody's going to be able to go out and buy this car and be able to take it to a racetrack and experience it just like I will be able to. And, you know, I think that's so special that, that people are going to be able to really experience that race car technology here, right here in a road car. Well, everyone's enthusiasm is amazing. And you can tell, I mean, you can just understand why this car is going to be is so special. But some final thoughts, Taj. Um, well, the enthusiasm is genuine. You can see the passion. And we that are in the film and here today are just the tip of the iceberg. There's hundreds of people, whether it's in engines or the whole rest of the car, hundreds and hundreds of people at General Motors uh, or at our suppliers who share that same passion. Uh, and that's, that's what makes the car what it is. It's a wonderful machine. And we spent a ton of time trying to articulate uh, what it is and how it drives. The best way to explain it to somebody is throw them the keys and walk away. It, a car talks for itself. Well, guys, just truly amazing to be with you. Your, your brilliance, your enthusiasm, your passion, and your ability to capture it, and your ability to drive it, Ollie. It's just amazing, and I can't wait to get behind the wheel. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Now, if you're like me, I'm sure you're going to want to go back and watch the film again, especially with all the insight from our guests here. And the good news is it will continue to be available to you on chevy.com slash Z06. And to our baseball fans out there, keep your eyes peeled for an appearance from the Z06 tonight as you watch game one. And with all that, you're definitely a baseball <laughs> fan. And with all that, from all of us here at Corvette, thank you so much for joining us. This is Justin Bell signing off. <laughs>